and then I know this because I promote Dijon, and then this man demolished Dijon. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, uh, honestly, he Linares didn't want that fight, and, and I'm sure Linares isn't really aching to fight him either. But but now you are technically that diamond chip. It should be technically Terence Crawford's mandatory, correct? Uh, that could be that could be uh, depending on the guidelines that WBC puts out. What they normally do is they give a voluntary optional match. So I would have an optional if I wanted to fight somebody else. Crawford would have a voluntary matchup, you know, if he wanted to hold the title or not. And then eventually they, they match each other up. Yeah. Mikey Joseph Correa, Front Proof Media, right here. Where am I at? Right here. Oh, okay, gotcha. Congratulations on an impressive win tonight. Thank you. I noticed early in the fight you were using a lot of feints. Was that something that you game planned for to kind of put him on the defensive, or was it something he was showing you, and was there anything that he did that surprised you in the fight? Well, I, I kind of figured out and, and realized that he was waiting to counter me. So if I just extended a jab, he would probably counter with an overhand right. So I would feint him to try to make him, you know, counter or try to, you know, bait him to, to throw his right and maybe I can counter him in return. So it was a lot of feint uh, to try to confuse him a little and seem to work. Uh, sometimes I landed the jab, sometimes I would just feint. Um, it, was, it was just part of the game plan to keep him guessing and, and uh, keep him, you know, on, on a little bit more on, on the defensive uh, side. Did he surprise you with anything? Not really. We knew he was, you know, fast and, and able to counter. Um, normally, he's very good at countering, also with an uppercut when you're very close on the inside. But that's why we weren't close on the inside. We didn't give him that opportunity. The overhand right, he landed a couple, a couple times after my jab. But we were expecting that. But even those were not flush. I was able to kind of, you know, step aside just enough to to avoid a, a solid, you know, right hand from him. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> When you were out for two years, a certain TV network told you no one cares about you. <laughs> well, how does it feel now when people do care? Two and a half years off, you know, and um, there was a lot of questions. You know, people wondered if my heart was still in it or if I would come back like before, if, if I'd be, you know, motivated enough. But, you know, it, it's nice to come back and show everybody that, you know, my heart's in it. I'm hungrier than ever. I'm probably better than ever. And, you know, we can see the results, you know, it was a great crowd, great outcome, a lot of fans came out to support, um, all the media was out here, so, you know, I think, I think that tells whoever had doubts, you know, shows them, you know, that we're, we're back and, and, you know, we're ready to take over. Mike, 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 oh. Mike BrooklynFights.com, TV reporter. Um, can you speak to the fact that um, one of the rounds, you, you seem to put your hands down when you was fighting Broder for about a good minute, a minute and a half. Um, can you speak about, um, you know, why you did that and what you saw in Broder that made you do that? As well as some of the training that you experienced with Marcus Maldonado previously when Maldonado fought um, Broder. Was some of that helpful also going against Broder? I, I worked with Marcos Maldonado.